Hello everyone, on behalf of group two, I'll be making a practical uh, presentation on the use of the Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool. The Threat Modeling Tool is a core element of the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle. It allows the software architects to identify and mitigate the potential security issues early when they are relatively easy and cost effective to resolve. So this tool enables everyone to communicate with the security design, to communicate about the security design of their systems, and also to analyze those designs for potential security issues using a proven methodology, and to suggest and manage mitigations for security issues. So using this feature, you will be following the stride um, methodology which uh, is the one that was used by Microsoft in developing this tool. So basically, uh, you still go through the same uh, modeling phases where you do the decomposition, where you break down the problem into smaller and simpler manageable modules, and then you do the threat mapping, that is identification of sources uh, of threats and threat, threats, uh, threat agents, as well as assessing the vulnerabilities, and then uh, uh, it will also do the threat risk rating, that is setting the risk priorities and ranking uh, them as well as conducting the impact likelihood assessment for each attack. You, it also allows the user to manipulate these priorities, but it gives you the uh, defaults. And uh, also the threat response and mitigation, that is establishing the safeguard and remedial actions. So these are two on its own will give you suggestions on how to resolve a certain issue or how to mitigate a certain threat. And uh, it gives you some, uh, um, yeah, it gives you general advice on the different strategies that you can use. So uh, because Microsoft uh, used, uh, based their, their, their two on the Sprite model, which, has, uh, which focuses on spoofing, tempering, repudiation, and uh, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges, you will notice that these two will definitely be giving you suggestions, uh, but categorizing the threats along the stride model. And then, um, where we discuss the features of the tool itself, so uh, this is the home page or the welcome page of the tool where you get to see the features and the properties um, of the tool itself. So some of the features are that you can create a tool from uh, using the tab called create a model. You can create your own model. You can also open an existing model that is already created in the system. You can also uh, create your own template different from the Microsoft one. You include your own stencil, stencils and three thread types and the custom thread properties for your thread model from scratch. This means you'll be deviating a bit from the ones that uh, were used uh, by default by Microsoft. When using uh, the already created templates, you have a choice of three, which is uh, the medical device, um, uh, medical device template for medical devices and then because they use different protocols and then you also have the one for Azure uh, platform and the one that we use in this practical example is the FDLTM knowledge base uh, template. We we'll proceed to open an empty template and then we talk about the different categories that you find under the stencils. Uh, because what you are basically doing with this tool is you are building a model uh, that tries to simulate or uh, that depicts the actual product that you want to build, be it a web, uh, an application or a system of uh, interacting um, elements. So in this case, you have uh, under the stencils, you have the processes, the generic processes, which are usually uh, indicated by a circle. And then you also have uh, the uh, generic external extractor, 
uh, the general uh, the generic explainer of the interactor. This is the uh, where you find the users or anyone who initiates uh, who initiates a command uh, or who initiates a command. These are authentication providers. You can have browsers. You can have users. You can have web applications. You also have the data store, which includes uh, the cache, the storage, the configuration files, the databases, the registries, and you also have data flows, which are, are basically the the protocols or the uh, the, 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 the the protocols that co that control communication between two elements within this system. You can have them as binary, L, LPC, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, IPsec, uh, named pipe, etc. And then you now have the trust line or the border boundaries, which are corporate networks, internet, machine sandbox, user kernel mode, which show you uh, where you end and where you start. Uh, Interfaces. Here, I'll give an example of a very basic, uh, uh, of a very very simple um, web application um, product. So, in this uh, product, we have um, a native application that is resident on your mobile phone. For example, we know that Facebook now owns the WhatsApp platform and the Instagram platform. So in this case, we'll take, for example, a Facebook a native application that is raised in on your phone, and it interconnects with a web application that is Instagram, meaning you can access the, West, uh, the Instagram um, application through your Facebook mobile application. So basically, as you can see from this model, we have the user, which is uh, the user that is you, the person, and we have the native application that is in your phone, and this can uh, work offline or online, and we also have the web application that you can only access on the web. So, um, using uh, the breakdown that I gave you before, the user will have a generic uh, data flow connection with his native application, and the native application will over the internet uh, access the web application which in turn the web application say the instagram application will then um, uh, access uh, a, a generic data store which might be a server that contains photos of a certain user that you want to view uh, on the instagram web application so basically here we have the user which is um, as, as we have discussed already is uh, a generic external uh, interactor and um, we have the native application here which is uh, a, gener a, gener a generic process as well as the web application which is a generic process and this one is a generic data store so here we have the interface uh, that connects the native application to the web application uh, this interface is uh, uses the http protocol and um, as you can see from this diagram, I have um, decided that uh, the human user and the native application are within the same uh, uh, privilege level. And I have um, uh, indicated here that they have the generic uh, trust border boundary, which um, also uh, acts as the demarcation between the native application and the web application interface. And again, also between the web application and the generic data store, there is um, an internet boundary, meaning we have an HTTPS here. I, I, I deliberately chose a more secure uh, type of protocol that connects the two. So, how does how does um uh, these two uh, help in uh, determining the, the in determining the, the the threats that we have? So basically, I will show. First, um, as you can see here, we are in the design uh, design view. Uh, this is where we are able to create um, a, a data flow diagram like this one. Now, for us to view the threads that are uh, that have been uh, identified or the threads that are there within the different boundaries that we have, we then go 
to the analysis uh, view. So under the analysis view, as you can see, we have uh, those categories according to the stride methodology, elevation of uh, privilege, tempering, um, spoofing. These are the traits that have been identified in this uh, in this uh, uh, model that we have. And uh, if you check here, we have about a total of 35 um, traits that have been identified. So what then you do as a designer is, now that we have identified these, um, uh, we have identified the traits, you can, um, for example, uh, pick one of, uh, of, of, of these traits. For example, let's look at uh, this one, elevation of privilege. We check, it will show you that uh, this, there is a thread um, here, the ID is number four. There's a thread between uh, the link uh, that links uh, the native application to the web application. And uh, these two will then uh, uh, give you a title uh, and category using the stride methodology. And it also try to describe the nature or type of, uh, of the thread um, that you have here. And then it will also uh, give you uh, the priority that this is high priority. And um, uh, now it is up to you as the designer to see what you can do to mitigate uh, this threat. And um, if, we, if we go to the, uh, to the threat properties, um, you can actually see that uh, uh, when you click a certain threat that is ID number four, um, it will give you an option to uh, show the status. So if, for example, we manage to mitigate this issue, we can uh, pick mitigated to show that we have already mitigated uh, this issue. Or it also allows us to manipulate the priority uh, depending on...